So to start off, we have uh, some small ones, footer link updates. That just means what it sounds like that we updated these links so they look like on Webflow and there's a third column for support now. Nothing special. Uh, next up, we have a couple of uh, mobile fixes. The first one yeah, I can't show because I don't have a Safari device that I can share my screen from right now, but essentially when you would, and I'm sure some of you experienced it on an iPhone, when you click on the prompt, it used to uh, zoom into the prompt and then like it would be a bit zoomed in and the page would like cut off like some of the content. And then you'd have to either zoom out and or just not nice. Uh, that's an accessibility thing from iOS. If the text of an input is smaller than 16 pixels, it will do that. So the fix was just to make the font bigger. And now it doesn't zoom in. Next up, we have another mobile fix. Uh, this was, if I go to one of my threads in here, uh, basically you noticed when I went to the page that the threads auto scrolls you down. And then when you ask something uh, of the chat, uh, imitating famous people, it will start auto scrolling as it's responding. Uh, now on mobile, if you scroll up, it will stay scrolled up basically as it's still responding before it used to just auto scroll you every time. And it would be quite annoying. So that's also working now. This used to work on desktop already. This is just for mobile. All right, then one last fix that I'm going to show off quickly is that the share feedback button was not working when this sidebar was open on desktop. Uh, this was like over it basically. I was not letting you click. Now that's solved. Our users can share feedback all the time. Okay, now it's time to go into actual features. First up, I, Aaron, do you want me to hand it over to you for these two or should I show them off? No, no, go ahead. Okay. Well, I won't take credit for them because Aaron did the work for these two. First up, we have prompt suggestions. I will scroll down here and you will notice we have a new section in the last response that you get from the LLM and that's with prompt suggestions. And you have three suggestions of follow-up prompts that you could, you could use. And of course you can click on them. I'm gonna click on the first one. It's going to enter it here, highlight the button, and then you can use it like a regular prompt. Yeah, yesterday now, on our, our user call, we got some feedback about the um, retention of those. And so right now, if you uh, refresh the page, the prompt suggestions are not going to be there. Um, but the users on a call yesterday, they all, all thought that they should be there. And so uh, today I'll follow up with a, an update that will uh, persist those suggestions. Uh, one thing that I'd like to do is to continue to iterate on this feature and others is uh, there's a prompt that is, is driving those suggestions. And I'd like to find a way for that prompt to be imported from Notion. It's not a campaign, um, but that, that system works very well. And so uh, maybe next week we can find a way to leverage that to get prompts like the prompt that's driving the suggestions. There's also a similar prompt for like summarizing a file or creating keywords from a file or the one that uh, is titling the threads. I'd like to just expose those prompts in a way so that uh, anybody can help improve them and, and test better, you know, new versions to, to find the best version of those prompts. Right now, it's, it's really only Andy or I or Alex who could update those, and I, I just don't want to be a bottleneck. I'll check this one off, and we can move on to GPT-40 Omni Mini for guest users. So I will try to become a guest user and I will say hi and we will see that for guest users we're now routing them to GPT-40 Mini. So thank you for that Aaron. Anything you want to say about this? Um, 
Just that I don't know why the GPT is lowercase. That's something I need to look at today. I, I want it to be uppercase in the button label there. That's all. Uh, next up, we have highlighting elements. And I think you might have already seen it just now when I was playing with the prompt, but we can now essentially highlight elements on a page. And we have two places where we do that. I'm going to show them both off in a second. I can find this one. So first of all, we have uh, highlighting of the submit prompt. Uh, we had this animation before. We felt like it wasn't attracting attention enough. So now we have this overlay that spotlights the element on the page. So now you can, the user knows exactly what they're expected to do. You can still either press escape or click anywhere on the overlay to turn it off. Or you can even click, if you click on the button to submit, which is the action we want the user to do, it will also turn off. And then the second highlight we have is something that will come in for the next feature that I'm going to present. But yeah, we have these two highlights yeah. on the page. So I didn't show this off yet because it's not in production, but it's going to be probably <laughs> today. Nice. So, yeah, nice the feedback speed, has been Andy. taken. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, so we uh, maybe I can talk a bit about um, this highlighting feature that we have because it's a library we're using and it's going to enable us to not only highlight elements on the page, but also uh, show text that we might want to associate with that element. And if I go to their documentation website for a second, um, we can also do animated tours through the page. So this will be great for onboarding users to certain features if we decide to do that. And we'll be able to use Okay, if we're done with this one, I'm going to go right into the next one, which you saw a sneak peek of. Uh, when you submit one of the prompts that, uh, when you're in a campaign that requires upload, we will now have the first uh, iteration of what we call inserts or thread inserts. And that just means any extra cards that can be inserted into the thread experience somewhere in the timeline, in this case, right at the bottom of the messages. And the first insert is the file upload insert, which will appear when you're um, going through a campaign that requires a file upload, and it will be a nice big CTA for the user to know that the next expected uh, action from them is to upload a file so that they can get their results. We're also doing the highlighting on this and it's got a nice glowy background. Make sure that the user can't miss it. 